Hello students, today we are going to be looking at a poem by Roald Dahl and the poem is called Television. What is most important about this poem is that it is relevant even today, although it was written in 1964. The kind of things that uh, Roald Dahl has written about in this poem stands even today and he uses the word idiotic box for television. So let's get started with the poem. About the poem. Let us read the poem. The most important things we have learned so far as children are concerned is never, never let them near your television set. Or better still, don't just install the idiotic thing at all. In the first line itself, it is very clear to us that Roald Dahl has advised that children should never be taken near the television set. Or, he says, it's better not to install the idiotic thing at all. But why is television called idiotic thing according to the poet? To know the answer, let us see throughout the poem how Roald Dahl attempts to answer it. Let's continue to read. In almost every house we have been, we have watched them gaping at the screen. They loll and slope and launch about and stare till their eyes pop out. They sit and stare and stare and sit until they are hypnotized by it. Here, the poet shares his experience, saying that in almost every house he has been, he has visited, he saw the children were gaping at the screen. They were watching continuously with their, eyes, with their eyes wide open and with absolute concentration. And he said that they are sitting for so long time in front of the television set that they become tired. So what they do is sometimes they sit and lie down in a lazy way and they continue doing this. But still they keep on staring at the television set. And they keep on repeating the same thing again and again until their eyes pop out. And he even said that until they are hypnotized by it. Hypnotized means to let something take control. When you are hypnotized, you are not in sense anymore. You don't understand what is right and wrong. Oh yes, we know it keeps them still. They don't climb out the window sill. But did you ever stop to wonder what this does to your beloved thought? Now he is asking the parents, saying that do you understand the fact that you make them sit in front of the television set, but what it does to your beloved children? Fine, they don't climb the window sill, they don't disturb you, they keep quiet. But then what is the effect of it? Then he answers it in a brilliant way himself. He says that it rots, it rots the sense in the head, it kills imagination that he can no longer understand a fantasy, a fairy land. His brain becomes as soft as cheese. His powers of thinking rust and freeze. Here, he said that you, we understand that when children are kept in front of the TV set, they don't do any mischievous things, climbing, kicking, fighting, punching. So the parents let them watch because they can cook the lunch and they can do all the household work. But with this, what happens to the children? The children are not able to think properly and it damages the sense in the head. Children are drawn away from reality and the real world around him and in the TV it's all different but he keeps on believing in what he watches he doesn't even consider what is the real thing and his own environment around him is hardly matching with the TV screen but he still thinks that what he watches are real and it also kills the power of imagination in the mind here children start to live in an imaginary world, thinking that they are also inside the set. 
they are doing everything what the character is doing and they slowly lose their own creative thinking their own imagination and though the tv shows displays most of the stories they the, uh, the children believe that it is in the real world and they cannot differentiate between the world of fairy tale and fantasy next he says all right to cry all right to say but if we take the set away what shall we do to entertain our children please explain so he says that he knows what the readers or especially the parents would ask him the question is how parents shall entertain their beloved children if the tv set is taken away from them so the poet answers the poet answers the above question saying that we will answer this by asking you what use the darling ch- wants to do how use they keep themselves con- contented before this monster was invented they used to read they read and read and read and read and then proceed to read some more get books about great scott one half of their lives was reading books such wondrous fine fantastic tales of dragon gypsies queens and whales and treasure isle and distant shores where smugglers rowed with muffled oars and pirates wearing purple pants and sailing ships with an elephant oh books what books they used to be they used to know those children living long ago the poet himself here he reminds us that children in earlier times used to read a lot of books surprisingly then people used to spend half of their lifetime reading books about great people uh, great scott gadzooks and those days the nurseries used to be full of books and here the poet even talks about popular books of adventure adventures that children used to read in his time those days boys and girls read about fantastic stories of dragons gypsies queens whales and about treasure islands smugglers pirates ships and elephants and so on and he says that <coughs> now he requests the parents to throw the set saying that so please oh please we beg we pray go throw your tv set away and in its place you can install a lovely bookshelf on the wall fear not because we promise you that in about a week or two of having nothing else to do they'll now begin to feel the need of having something to read and once they start oh boy oh boy you watch the slowly growing joy that fills their hearts they'll grow so keen they wonder what they've ever seen in that ridiculous television screen and later each and every kid will love you more for what you did now he said that once you install the bookshelf instead of television set the parents will surely face some dirty looks the children will scream they'll shout they'll bite they'll kick they'll do lots of bad things but then once they realize that they have nothing else to do they will start to think the need of reading something and once they will understand the joy of reading books they'll be interested they'll have the interest to read more and more books and this will give them the imagination and thoughts the knowledge and wisdom the satisfaction of mind and heart and at one stage they will grow so interested in reading books that they will wonder what was even there in that silly machine called television and they will hate the television screen they will think that it is disgusting and unclean because they will discover the real joy of reading books and finally every children each and every kid will love their parents for deciding the best for them for giving them that 
the opportunity to find real joy in reading books. And even when they grow up, they will thank their parents, say, uh, saying that, thank you for throwing the television set away and installing the bookshelf instead of that. Here, the poet advocates for reading and only reading. He thinks that TV can never be substitute for books. Books are only things that can deliver real wisdom. So I believe you have understood the poem. The exercises which are there in the chapter will be discussed with you and later be uploaded in the school website. Thank you. Study well.